What's up, you guys? All right, well, here we are. It's Monday morning and uh, starting the week with $14,000 profit. Not bad. Uh, it's actually my second smallest green day of the month, which goes to show that this has been an absolutely insane month. Uh, $14,000 is still a really solid day. Uh, the only thing that is frustrating today is that I had a couple of trades on NETE uh, where I was sized up with eight, 6,000, then 8,000, 10,000, even 12,000 shares. And I was, I was sized up ready for a dollar a share, dollar 50 a share breakout, and then stopped out break even. It happened twice. And that was really frustrating. Um, and then I had one that I wasn't sized up really aggressively on. I had about six or 7,000 shares and dropped almost a dollar a share. I was down seven grand. I actually added on the dip. It popped back up a little bit. It was still a loss. And so I was kind of frustrated because I felt like I was stepping up to the plate. You know, it was the pitch was coming in perfectly. I was like, this looks good. And then I was just like not connecting. And I don't think it was anything that I was doing wrong today. I think it was just, um, you know, as it turns out, some days are hotter than others. And today the momentum wasn't quite as hot as um, it was last Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But last Monday, I also made only about $14,900. So, um, you know, it, it's Mondays are, are the beginning of the week. I usually like to start a little slow, kind of test the water. And then if it's hot, you know, ease in and, and you know, ease onto the throttle and be a little more aggressive. So kind of this is the same as I how I started last week. And tomorrow definitely has an opportunity to be a really great day. But you know, it's the market's gotta be hot. We've gotta see the gappers and we've gotta see them hold their pre-market high or pull back and then break the, the VWAP and then rip through the pre-market high. And that didn't happen yet, at least with either of the two stocks that were our leading gappers. So, um, you know, of course it may happen midday or afternoon, but I don't wanna overstay my welcome. So I'm gonna take the money off the table. It's always a hard decision to know when to do that and live to trade another day. So I'll be back at it tomorrow. Enjoy the recap, questions, comments, leave them right down below. And I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning, live streaming right here, my watch list right around 9 a.m. All right, see you guys tomorrow. All right, everyone, so we're gonna do a, a little bit of an earlier midday market recap. It's 10 a.m., 30 minutes trading, $14,271.21, and I'm done for the day. I don't really wanna overstay my welcome today. The two leading gappers in the entire market this morning were NETE, uh, well, not including these really light volume stocks, NETE and EDSA. These are the two that I was focusing on in trading, as you can see uh, right here. And um, both of them are, sort of below the, the high right now. I will say that in the last few weeks, I've actually been making some really nice profits between 10 and 10.30, but here's what I don't like on EDSA. I don't like this big rejection right here. And it did, it did two kind of nasty rejections. It did one right here, a, a rejection of the volume weight average price. It then broke it and then did a false breakout or a rejection of the whole dollar of eight and is now coming back down towards the lows. So this to me just feels um, way too risky to be trading to the long side. It feels weak, it's not holding up super well. It's well below its high, which was 980 pre-market. So EDSA, don't wanna overstay my welcome on it. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I thought maybe it would be a bigger winner than it, would, than it was, but $3,400 is not nothing, so I'll be content with that. NETE leading gapper up 10,000. And this one is kind of frustrating for me because I did get chopped out on it a little bit. I had a couple of difficult trades that really didn't work out super well. Uh, as you can see, this range has been crazy. At the open, it rips up to 1350, drops down to 1130, rips back up to 1340, drops down to 1112. Right here, as it dropped to 1112, I actually uh, got long. And I thought it was gonna do a, a false halt. And as it turned out, I was holding into a halt going down, which um, I really don't like when that happens, um, you know, but it does happen from time to time. So I was in that into a halt going down. 
uh, long at $11.12. On resumption, it ripped here up to 12. So I actually ended up making 50 cents on it. It then does a consolidation right here. It then pops up to 12.44 and gets halted. On resumption of the halt, it drops down. I bought the dip right down here at uh, 11.75. I then added it 12.25 and 12.35, thinking it was gonna break over the half dollar right here. It then flushes and drops down to 11, and I get back almost half my profit on that loss right there. It then sells off some more, does a false halt down here, and I did catch a, a bounce coming back up. I think it was actually right here that I caught the bounce from $10 up to $10.75. So, uh, and then I did it again, like right down here. So a couple dips off the low. I did not trade this last one, but again, at this point, I'm just feeling like, you know what? I'm I'm trading, I'm, I'm kind of facing an uphill battle, you know, trading against the, the trend when it's clearly stair-stepping down. And, you know, on this one, I did the best I could, but I had a couple of trades where all of a sudden I was down 50 cents like that. And so like down here on NETE, this is actually a spot that I would kind of, you know, generally be tempted to take, to take a long, to try to take a dip bounce trade. It's a double bottom down here at 61. Um, you know, but with the momentum clearly to the sell side, I just don't want to be early on that and then again get caught in a halt going down. So for now, I'm just going to say, you know what, I'm, I'm happy with the 10 grand and I'm going to, I'm going to leave that alone. So 10,000 on NETE, 3,000 on EDSA and 250 on GNUS, which was kind of choppy. Uh, it's curling back up a little bit right now, but I tried to. I actually took the, this trade pre-market uh, for the break of five dollars, and it hit a high of five oh five, and I, I sold so five cents a profit or whatever that was on five thousand shares. So you know, I am a little bit bummed out today that we aren't seeing the crazy, crazy momentum that we've been seeing uh, from the last few days. But at the same time, you know, trade the market you're in and. If things are slow, it's much better to ease off the pedal than to keep adding on something like this that's dropping more and more and more. I mean, at a certain point, people are going to stop buying dips off the low because it's just, well, where is it going to find support? This thing could come back down to six bucks. So, you know, today's maybe going to be a little bit of a day of, of rest for momentum trading. Not that 14,000 isn't great. It's a terrific day, you know, by most standards, but it's my second worst day of the month. So, you know, that's where I'm at right now. My worst day of the month was only 4,000 in profit. So this is my second worst day of the month. And uh, it's because the two leading gappers have both sort of uh, faded. Even though they've provided some opportunity, they didn't break VWAP and rip to the highs. So in order for this to be like a 25, 35, 45, $50,000 day, I would have needed this either right here or right here to rip up to 1245 or in this case rip up to 1364 and squeeze up to 15 16 17 18. now i was skeptical of this one already because the pre-market news was um, letter of intent to merge and i was kind of like okay well usually that comes with a price i didn't see any prices so i i was a little bit i was a little bit sort of put off by that catalyst but clearly it was strong so i didn't want to overthink it too much, but I, I do think that that catalyst probably didn't help things. EDSA was a COVID-19 catalyst, so I was like, okay, well, those have been pretty strong, but I think what happened here is that all of a sudden momentum shifted to NETE. And so EDSA, if NETE hadn't popped up, might have actually kept going, but you know, traders kind of shift their focus to whatever's really hot right now. So instead of looking to do dip trades and kind of buy up this EDSA pullback that was happening pre-market, at that point, traders were like, EDSA is dead to me. I'm focusing on NETE. This became the new, um, you know, the new stock in town. So it's kind of funny how that happens. And I think that that might've been kind of the case today. And NETE's catalyst maybe isn't quite as strong and traders are maybe some traders are a little smart, smarter and are knowing that and not as aggressive to buy the dips and maybe more aggressive to short it. I, I don't know. But in any case, uh, a green day today, a little bit of a slower start to the week. But Mondays uh, do tend to be a little bit slower for me usually. 
as I kind of am just testing the water and kind of getting back into the groove and seeing what the market feels like, the, the last thing that you really want to do at the beginning of the week, uh, and I'm sure this is going to be salt and open wound for some, but is to you know have a big loss because then it kind of sets the tone a little bit for the week. So you know it's the same with each day, starting the day with smaller trades and then scaling up if it's strong, starting the week a little bit smaller and then scaling up if it's strong. I generally think that's a better way to do it. So today, you know, a little bit of a smaller green day for me, but a green day nonetheless, a good start to the week. And uh, I only have at this point four more green days to go in order to tie my previous longest hot streak. So I need to be green through Friday. And then I think if, as long as I'm green on Monday, I will break my previous record in terms of the number of consecutive green days in a row. And you know, for what it's worth, having consecutive green days, if, if it's really your mission and you're really kind of focusing on that, the easiest way to have consecutive green days is to start each day with small share size. That way you don't risk hitting max loss and being knocked out on your first trade. If you do go red, you have to be really selective as you look for the next trade. But because you start with small share size on the next trade, you can trade with slightly bigger share size and then get yourself out of the hole. Of course, if that does become a loss, then you've got kind of that third trade. So now if you've had two losses right out of the gates, you've got the third try to get you out of the hole. So the worst case scenario would be three consecutive losers. And on that third one with bigger size, even than the first and second, that you go red and then that's when you hit your max loss and you're done for the day. But usually, if you've got a decent level of experience, you're not super likely to have three losses in a row. I mean, it can happen, but you can usually avoid that just by through experience, intuition, making good decisions. So, you know, the problem is um, if you are trading with that mindset of trying to have a consecutive day hot streak, you're going to be more conservative on your first couple of trades. And on some in some markets, you really only get one or two trades and then things are just kind of dead. So when that's the case, you're really not going to make a lot of money. So during my last hot streak, I had days where I would stop trading up only a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. And I would just be like, well, that, that's it. You know, there's nothing else to trade, which is sort of how I feel right now today, that there's not really anything else to trade. Nothing is really ripping. There's a couple things that are selling off. I could try to do dip trades, but I don't want to, you know, overstay my welcome when it seems like momentum's fading. So the good news is that because of where I'm at with share size, I was able even still to get a good cushion. But anyway, so that's it for me. I will be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. Warrior Pro students, we're going to jump into the classroom and uh, we'll start class probably in about 15 minutes. So we'll start class a little earlier today and try to make some uh, good progress. All right, so I'll see you guys uh, for summer school in the Warrior Pro classroom. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Help us hit 750,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button and stay tuned and check out some of my other awesome uploads right here on YouTube.